Hey guys, it's Mitch Kennedy back with video 24. Yesterday we talked about non-specific defenses like your first line of defense, your skin, uh, interferon, you know, inflammation response. Today we're going to talk about specific defenses. And when we talk about specific defenses, we talk about this, the immune response itself. You know, basically what happens is a substance, an antigen, triggers the response. It's going, anything that comes to your body that's seen as foreign is going to trigger this immune response. Uh, viruses, bacteria, pathogens are all antigens, you know, anything that's foreign. And the cell will recognize it, and then it will try to get rid of it. Now, there are basically two things that, two white blood cells, which are called lymphocytes, that are involved in specific defense mechanisms, and they are B cells and T cells. Um, basically, these are both white blood cells, and the B and the T tells me where they mature. B cells mature in the bone marrow, T cells mature in the thymus gland. Um, I forgot I had some fancy dancy um, workings here of flipping and flopping. Um, but anyway, let's go into each one of these B cells. B cells produce the memory cells. That's important for you for the test. They produce memory cells. Memory cells are going to help us recognize it. That's why a lot of us haven't been sick with the chicken pox more than once. Once we have had chicken pox, our bodies make B cell our B cells are made that remember chicken pox every time we come in contact with it again over and over and over and we're able to knock it out before it actually start, starts. All right? B cells also produce antibodies. And remember, antibodies are what's going to attack bacteria and other things that enter into our body. Now, your T cells, I think of them as the cytotoxic killer T cells. T cells will actually engulf foreign particles and destroy them that way. If you've ever had a sore on your hand or leg or anything like that and you had a scab and you had pus around it, that was probably dead T cells or dead macrophages. All right, but B cells, you need to know, make antibodies and memory cells. T cells are like your killer T cells. All right, now let's talk about the types of immunity. First one is acquired immunity. All right, it can be active immunity, it can be one. If you acquire immunity actively, <coughs> excuse me, if you acquire immunity actively, that means your body actually did something. I've always told you that anytime you see the word active, to think of energy. So active immunity is going to require us to use energy. Um, it was first created by a man named Edward Jenner who um, actually dealt with smallpox and cowpox uh, and figured out how to create vaccinations to prevent people from getting sick. And active immunity, if I went and got a shot, and all of you did probably when you were five, got shots for school. They give you weakened forms of the virus. Your body defeats it, but it remembers it. It makes B cells, so anytime it comes in contact with it again, it does it. But you had to do something. This stays with you forever, so you, ha you have it. Now, the second type of immunity is passive. Now, if you think of passive, passive means that it requires no energy. You know, if you were to passively study for the test, that means you probably just put it underneath your book and hope by diffusion it would... Knowledge would diffuse from the book to your to your brain. You know, realize that doesn't work too well. But passive immunity, it means that, like, if we went to the doctor and got an antibiotic shot, your body's not actually doing it. Every whom, everyone made that antibodies did the actual work. So passive immunity doesn't stay with you for very long. It does help you to fight infection, but you have to go get it or acquire it from somewhere else. You know, breast milk's a great place to get passive immunity. Uh, you know, Doctors often encourage females to breastfeed the first couple of months or the first years of a baby's life because they're passing their antibodies on from them to the baby. And that just makes the baby have a healthier life to start with anyway. So passive immunity, we do nothing for it. It doesn't stay around very long. Active immunity, we give energy uh, to do it, and it stays with us for life. Now, when we talk about disorders, you know, a lot of us nowadays have allergies, and allergies is an overreaction of the immune system to an antigen. Um, our body releases a thing called histamines, which causes blood to flow uh, more freely and increases fluids. When your histamines are being released in your body, that causes your nose to run, your eyes to run if you have allergies. Now, what would you take if you had an allergy? You would take an antihistamine, and that would prevent the release of this. Now, the last thing I want to talk to you about is AIDS. Uh, AIDS is Acquired Immune Deficiency Syndrome, and it's caused by HIV, which is the Human Immunodeficiency Virus. Uh, if you look on pages 1045 and 1048 in your book, 
you need to know about AIDS, you need to be able to tell me what AIDS and HIV stands for on the test. All right, so read those pages and look over. Now, I hope this has helped you a little bit with specific defenses, and you guys have a wonderful day.